have fresh salmon in the palmeni. Oh. oh. Okay, she brought uh -oh. Your conversation gets too dry. Oh, okay. Uh oh, I, I, she said our conversation was too dry, David. We gotta drink some more. Growing up in Kent, Washington, it took us a while to realize how diverse it was. And now I remember there was actually a lot of Eastern European immigrants from Russia, Ukraine, and Poland. I learned Russian curse words on the school bus rides home, and I ate Eastern European chocolate, but I had never tried the food. And on this channel, we're always trying to learn about everything, so we had to check out Zarevna and Veselka in New York City, especially since their cuisines might have a little more ancient influence from the Far East than I had originally thought. After all, half of Russia is in Asia. So, what do we share? Let's find out. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, fellas? Yo, what's going good on? It's good, good, guys. Oh, man, why, why don't you introduce yourself? Yo, tell us where we're at. We're at Tsaryevna in the Lower East Side. I'm Chef Ricky Delinsky, and I run this place with my wife, Maria. What are you guys doing here? I saw on the outside, it says, New Russian. A lot of people have this misconception that Russian food is a shot of vodka and a potato and you're good. So for us, we actually find a lot of personality in Russian cuisine. Like American food, it's regional and it embodies a lot of what the immigrants right. that brought there and their cultures and how it's sort of mixed into the melting pot that is Russian food. Nice. And you yourself, you are like kind of like a mix of things, right? Yeah, so my father is of Slavic descent. Um, I am married to my wife who's born and raised in Russia. Uh, and my mother's actually from Taiwan. How come the perception of Russian food is so that it's so simple? A lot of people and a lot of restaurants here in New York especially, I think serve a lot of Russian food that are classically Soviet food. They were focusing on the, the space race. They weren't focusing on the, on the yeah. food race, right? For <laughs> sure, for yeah. sure, yeah. Let's check it out. Let's go. All right, man, we are here. I want to make sure I say this as well as I can. Saryevna. That is very good. Thank you, I, man. Been working on the on the <clears throat> Russian accent. I conjured my inner Sorry. James Bond. We got our spread here. Let's start over here. Yeah, man. So what we have going on here? This is our hacha puri, okay? So this made here is leaving in house with sourdough for three days. Traditionally in the boat shape still, but we jazz it up a bit with some brown butter, and crab, aioli, and ajika. It has like a sort of a old bay crab okay. cake vibe going on. Okay. Dude, this is kind of like. Popping IG like 2020, 2019, it shut the game down, right? It totally did, yeah. People were blowing up. Uh, what are the roots of this dish? So this is technically the national dish of Georgia. Georgia's so really cool. in this like fascinating place that almost like the media probably never thinks about, right? It's like in this, is it east, is it west? It's like right in the middle, right? Totally, and some people have said it's sort of like the last uncharted territory of Europe even. I'm just saying for the gram, the egg yolk is crucial. I'm sure that's also the tradition too. It is, and then the egg yolk mixed in and the cheese coming out. Again, right. fellas, let's do it. I don't know, I don't know what- don't Just know. rip it off at the end? Just do it, yeah, right. come on. You guys are brothers? Yes! Yeah. So, okay. so now what you can Woo! do- Look at this bread, yo. I've never seen you guys- Super fluffy. Hajikori. Hajikori. Wow, that was amazing. Mm. That's good. I feel like that egg yolk did a lot too. It adds so much richness to mm -hmm. the whole thing. Okay, we are moving on to the dumpling section. We're gonna shed some light on the history and what we got going on here. Dumplings are a big part of Eastern European culture. Vereniki can also be referred to as pierogi. This is our potato and caramelized onions. We then toss it in sort of a brown butter, caramelized onion pan sauce and scallions. Basically, Russian ravioli. Yeah, let's Vereniki. Vereniki. Mmm. Yo, guys. Many dumplings. Okay, we got the sour cream here. Sour cream. Especially with the potato one, it almost was like you needed that with the potato. Re remember the best baked potato you ever had? There was sour cream in it, I'm telling you. This one might be more in the Asian repertoire. So we use veal and pork. There is some juice from there, but not as much as a soup dumpling, but it's just a good dumpling. So veal and pork, veal, paprika, pepper. How many? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not minced, not as juicy as like shalombal. Actually, it, it still gives me kind of like that slight meatball vibe. You know how like when you open up a dumpling, there yes. usually the meat is still coming together. Yes, exactly. Obviously, I think dumpling meat, they generally put in some soy sauce and obviously more of the very East Asian like seasonings. Yes. But yes. this is really good. More Western countries that have dumplings, they eat it differently. Whether it's like they put more like a gravy on top or they like put Montu like more or seasoning Montu. on sure. top. Sure, Monte, right. yes, yeah, exactly. Monte. It would be cool if like maybe like the Chinese could have taken some influence from that and like incorporated into how we eat them. I would love to have 
an Asian dumpling with sour cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or some jiao jiao like, yeah, yeah. like what if yeah. instead of vinegar? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of what if instead of vinegar for the shaolin bao is it, it's something else. Hopefully, we get to a point where food is no longer politicized. It should never, you know, be. it and, should and never. And good be. food is just good food. You, you know about Russo Korean food, right? Which is, I guess, is its own genre that hasn't probably made it to the U.S. It's interesting because Russia, for a long period of time, was kind of more like in Western Europe, right? And then over the past what 500 years, they really pushed eastward yes and now it's like this whole part that you, uh, like half of russia is in asia what do you know about like i guess like the mixing as a result of that historically i mean with anything else it's a lot of conquering and all that stuff. It has lots of roots in french cuisine a lot of roots in hyper local and a lot of execution from asian cuisine and home style cooking this has been so dope Ricky, I appreciate it, man. And you really bring it all together because we were always looking at like, obviously there's more of a personal connection when you do see like, I guess the Asian angle in a food. Kudos to you. Oh, Thanks, thank guys. You, man. Thank you. Thank you for stopping yeah, in. Food. Definitely come through Saverna. Sarievna. Sarievna. Come through Sarievna. All right, Andrew, we have landed at a staple spot in the East Village called Veselka. And it's been open since 1954. They've been serving authentic Ukrainian food, you know, obviously with an expanded American portion. And, and I want to say this is not just for like Ukrainian or Eastern European restaurants. This restaurant is famous, period. It's right at this famous corner of East Village where pr pretty much you cannot miss it. It's open 24 seven and they are, it's just a really popular restaurant. It is, Andrew, according to many lists, one of the best 24 seven restaurants in the country. That's interesting because usually 24 hour spots, you're thinking it's diner food, it's like eggs, omelets, pancakes I actually have been here once at 3 a.m. I think I've been here with you at 3 a.m. before well, all right you know what it's not 3 a.m. it's 3 p.m. let's get into it you know we have a tagline you know we're Ukrainian soul food I want you to have the experience that you went to an Eastern European grandmother's house how do you compare Ukrainian food and Russian food I have a lot of similarities I mean um, bias to Ukrainian food because I'm, I'm, I'm half Ukrainian we have a large base across the spectrum you know this area is very popular with students as well as we get traditional Ukrainians we have a Russian community that comes and likes to eat here we have people who have been coming here for 50 years just because we've been here for 50 years it's somewhat of an institution especially in this neighborhood okay so round one of our Ukrainian food journey David we're starting off with borscht soup okay this is probably the most famous dish from Ukraine yeah we got a cold borscht here which is crazy I've never seen this before and this is actually authentic borscht Andrew I know me and you have eaten a lot of La Sung Tong aka Hong Kong version of borscht right which I believe came uh, from Ukraine to Russia Russia to Hong Kong this is a cold borscht this is what they serve in the summer and this is interesting because look how like that color is pretty cool it's ice borscht hot borscht mm. so they say that borscht soup is like a meal in a bowl I can tell bro this is tasty I think for pretty much probably anybody outside of like Europeans probably their first borscht might be from a Hong Kong cafe whoa it actually does not taste that different the Hong Kong version does somewhat taste like it the, I think the Hong Kong version from what I know it has less beets it has more like tomato cabbage I like the Hong Kong version this authentic Ukrainian borscht is better than the Hong Kong version oh, like this, the cold one's fire is this the color of my hat close Andrew I'm actually gonna wash this down with a sip of uh, Ukrainian beer all right cheers bro. and you got the Levitsky I got the Obalon like I read too quick, man. I can't drink too much. Borscht Bros. Okay, next on, guys, we gotta hit the pierogies, aka the Ukrainian dumplings. I'm gonna start off with a fruit dumpling. All right. This is a Valensky filled with blueberries, Andrew, and a very special sweet sour cream. And right. the sauté onions is a must. The sauté okay. onions. Mm -hmm. Even with this one. Uh, not the blueberry okay, one, okay. but the regular one. See, I didn't know a dumpling would ever have blueberry filling. That is something that's kind of mind blowing right now. Blueberry Valensky. That is literally blueberries wrapped in a doughy dumpling skin dipped in sweet cream. Fried pierogi. Andrew, Jason was telling us this is the number one seller. When you talk about ribeye and, you know, America is such like a beef-centric country, yeah. I mean, you got some of the best beef right in this dumpling. Andrew, we have a mushroom sauerkraut pierogi. Oh. I love trying different types of dumplings, man. I mean, I'll tell you this. This looks like a Chinese dumpling. And I'm not saying it comes from China, but it could be coming from what? The Mongolians, maybe? The Tartars? History's crazy. Almost like a um, Swan Thai dumpling. Oh, with pickled cabbage. Yeah. So. What, what was that one? Yeah, I don't know. I picked it up off the same place, so I think that was. Uh, <laughs> is that tomato egg? It was good. I... Wait, show me. Oh, this is a bacon, egg, and cheese one. Oh. They threw one in there for us. Ukraine, if you've never looked at a map, 
Ukraine is a pretty big country, like bigger than land mass wise. It's huge, actually. Bigger than Germany, bigger than France. This is your uh, arugula and goat cheese pierogi. Hmm. It's a lot of cheese with the sour cream, but I accidentally dipped mine in the sweet sour cream, and I gotta say that it actually worked out. Am I turning red? No, not yet. But I think after that, that there, that you're red now. That's it. Andrew, we had the borscht, we had the beer, but we are looking at some real Ukrainian food right here. This is a Ukrainian latka. Yeah. I like how thinly shredded the potatoes are. This is a little different than a hash. Don't get it mixed up with a hash no, brown. Dude, Look at that. Latkas are huge Ooh. in Eastern Europe. I love these. I'm well. really looking forward to this hobotsky, I right, believe. Let's go at the deluxe. This is a right cabbage here. roll. This is stuffed a... cabbage with meat and rice. Stuffed cabbage roll. It's got a um, wild mushroom gravy. Tastes like a rice meatball. Like a wild rice mushroom soup. Yeah, it has a little bit uh, kind of herbaceous. The wild mushroom, wild rice, kind of herby, creamy yo, flavor is, yo, is really popular amongst American food. Let's try the kubasa. A the premium, that was a premium kubasa. Uh, you know, we didn't grow up eating just sausage and kielbasa, but I enjoyed it, man. Oh, it was, yo, I gotta, I'm not gonna lie, this kubasa. Really? All right. Moving on to the Ukrainian latka. This is your classic latka. There's an applesauce here. You have a sour cream there. Eaten um, all around Eastern Europe. Exactly. You know, when you get your stuffed hatch browns over at IHOP, they don't they don't give you the applesauce. I'm saying it on the streets of New York right now. I love the shredded potato hash brown. And this is similar to it. Let's get it. Oh. The potatoes are shredded very, very thin. Usually at the breakfast spots, your diners, you're going to see them a lot bigger. And then across the edges, what that allows it to do is it allows all those little potatoes to get crispy. But man, look at that. Oh. You guys, just for the record, John is 10% Mongolian. Try the pierogies. These pierogies are mine. All right, you guys, we are at our third and probably the most authentic spot, and we are at Anyway Cafe in the East Village. We're eating Russian French food. I mean, let's look at this. So relating it to a dumpling or a one ton, the dough skin looks just as thick as dumpling skin. You know why you might like it is because it's folded more, but the skin is thinner. Same in pelmeni. Mmm. Yo, that is fascinating. With the sauce on it, it almost tastes more like a salmon wellington. Almost like an ikura flavor. Yeah, dude, that's crazy how it kind of tasted Japanese because our reference for this type of fish egg is Japanese ikura. Yeah, I think David, that, what do you I, think about it being a salmon dumpling? Because I think that this was fascinating. I noticed there's a ton of salmon on this menu, whether it's smoked salmon, we have fresh salmon in the pelmeni. Oh. oh. Okay, she brought uh -oh. Your conversation gets too dry. Right? Oh, okay. Uh -oh. This... I, I, she said our conversation was too dry, David. We got to drink some more. Oh, I okay. think we should get a splash of Everdeal vodka. Okay. Ooh, bro, uh, it's lit. This is horseradish. It's very popular in Russia. Okay, so this horseradish vodka is going to be giving us some wasabi vibes. Why give me doing a lot? which is literally for your health. Zazdorovia, for your health. Pour me up the horseradish one, bro. Oh! We're here, and I am so glad we came here because, Andrew, this is turning into a, like, a really authentic cultural experience. Yeah, Hold on, I gotta see John take it. Yo, John. That's the dope. Vodka. Vodka, as they would say, all right? Dude, you are in the sweltering heat. This guy is sweating bullets, too. We have the Russian crepes with the caviar. This is uh, the exact same recipe as the French do it. Crepes. Wow. The salmon eggs start bursting in your mouth, and you get a little bit of sour cream. And David, you got a whole stem of dill in there. Ooh, ooh. And we were told that our, our conversation was too dry and that we have to wet it up with some more vodka. We gotta move on. All this on the menu, Russian peasant beef stew. It's braised in red wine. Russian, Russian beef, beef stew. stew. That red wine flavor is really coming through. That beef is so tender. It's melting in my mouth, but it has all the good elements. I mean, that has very, very deep, beefy and red wine. Here we have the chicken and herb sauce crepes. Check that out. Wow, that's like a chicken pot pie in a crepe. I've never seen this before. Chicken and herb crepe. Wow, strong wine flavor, creamy. It's got the little bits of mushroom in there. Everything is coming together really nice. That is really good too. I don't know, this, oh. Here, it's your signature Vladimir mm -hmm. drink. And the base is beet horseradish. People start just drinking it shots. That's is the it, color. It is this going to taste a little dice? bit like borscht? Absolutely. Andrew, this is essentially a borscht vodka. Let's do it. 
David, at the start of this video, kind of one of our goals was to explore the possible ancient Asian influence in Russian and Ukrainian food. What would you say we found? One thing I learned is that it's really regional. For example, if you look at regions of China that have been influenced by Russian cuisine, number one would be Harbin. Harbin and Dongbei, which is right next to Russia. The area is right next to Russia, yeah. But number two would be Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong cafe culture has been influenced. And that was a sort of a pan-European influence on the British colony of Hong Kong. So I realize now that just like you could point to different dishes that Chinese eat, there's such a wide range because the country's so big that we said we're eating Franco-Russo food right yeah. now, which is French-Russian. When you're talking about big countries with long histories, it is really complicated and it, it is multi-layered and actually it has often to do with provinces and even local geography. All right, Andrew, we are finishing it off. Sure this is a... a uh, pretty sure that's a Bloody Mary. That's what, it was. what is that? You tell me, man. That is a... Guys, we rarely drink on the channel, but we just had to do it because, you know, yeah. we're at a Russian restaurant. That is restaurant. a smoky Worcester vodka martini. Bloody Mary. While this rest of this food does not look Asian at all or Chinese, the Pelmenis do. Okay, Andrew, this might be the most liquor that we've consumed on the channel before. But it makes sense, and I'm happy to say that it was at the Russian spot, Anyway Cafe in East Village. From what we researched and found out ourselves, there are a ton of diverse influences depending on where a country is located. For example, Ukraine and Western Russia have a lot more influence from Western Europe like France and Poland. Middle and Eastern Russia have a lot more influence from the Middle East and East Asia. The Asian influence coming from the ancient Mongolian Empire, which conquered a lot of territory way back in the day, including China. It makes sense that you would be influenced by your neighbors. I mean, there are some dishes in China that are Russian, Turkish, Mongolian, and Korean influenced, vice versa. It's kind of what happens when your country is large, old, and has traded with other cultures for centuries. Hey guys, if you guys found that video interesting, please hit that like button. Please click subscribe and definitely turn on your notifications. We're gonna be traveling to all different types of restaurants while in New York City because guess what? You can see the world through New York. So, cheers. Let us know in the comments down below if you've ever tried Russian or Eastern European cuisine. Guys, until next time, we out. Peace. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, yo. Get out of here, yo. I'll maybe want a tap dancing person here.